Hello, welcome to another devlog. Um, since the last one, in which I talked about three different game ideas that I've been working on, um, I've started uh, focusing on the third option, the one that I thought was less likely that I'd do. Um, that's uh, a first person game based on the beginning of my last jam game that I made uh, a narrative inside a small environment. Um, I'm doing that one because it's the one that I got a bunch of ideas and inspiration about. Uh, really, I went on holiday for a week after the last video and on holiday spent a lot of time with a notebook and wrote out most of the story and a bunch of designs and plans and things for for this so it, it, it's what I'll work on next and it's what I'm going to show a bit of today with all of the caveats that this is super early uh, lots of things are broken it doesn't look like how it's going to look in the end but just to have a look at how things are going and at this early stage I'll do that's true. Um, I don't think I showed any of this in the video, although it was started uh, in, in the last video. Um, so this is the, the game environment. It's a, it's a house, uh, a flat rather. Um, I haven't quite got the shaders working as I want them, so it doesn't 100% look how it will, but this is more or less how it's going to be, with a mostly flat style with some shadows. Um, this is not working yet, but um, this is kind of the major interactive bit of the game is going to be these stories, these stories of choices that you can enter into by exploring. So uh, when it's done, uh, which is not at all, you'll be able to click on the TV and enter and enter and uh, make choices when a story. Um, that's not done yet. Uh, but uh, there'll also be lots of things to investigate. You may have seen this if you've been looking at my Twitter. Um, that I've, I've got these objects to investigate and things. Now I haven't 100% got this working right because the, the rotation doesn't quite work as it should. It's counterintuitive. And um, I was reading a couple of papers on how to, how to do this and I still don't know exactly how I am going to do it. How to translate the, the, two dim the two axes of mouse movement into the three uh, three dimensions of screen space, but the, the idea is there, it just needs the, the algorithm tweaking a bit. Um, uh, so yeah, a significant part of the game is there'll be lots of objects around that you can investigate and read stuff about, and some like this are pretty innocuous, and others like this have a little bit more going on where there's a, there's a little story here. This one says, uh, oh, this is not real, I just wrote this as an example. One day after two glasses of red wine, Mum declared that the snake man of Wapping was the only man she'd ever admired. And that was why she kept his portrait here, right in the living room. So, the idea is that you'll be learning about the people who live here. You know, it's, it's very gone home-esque, let's say. Um, and I've just been playing with these ideas of, you know, little things that you can, you can pick up and investigate. Um, they give you little bits of information and so on and there's not going to be an infinite number of things that you can interact with but I do want bits and pieces that you can interact with anyway this is the living room which is getting there it's got most of its furniture there's a bunch more objects and things to go in on the shelves and I want to plug things in I want cabling I haven't done any of that yet there are no light fixtures yet but this is a good idea of how it's going to look. This is the master bedroom, although it's missing a bunch of furniture. And this is kind of another, oh, I've not done the, 
the reticule on this. But there's another example of interaction. There's a thing under the bed that you can find, and it has some text on it that will tell you about it. I've done a few other, I forgot about this, yes, in here. There are other bits which which do this when you when you look at them. And I the reason that deletes itself is I've been experimenting with different ways of presenting these things. Things which stay permanently, things which delete themselves after a while. And they can be written by, uh, by they can be typed out by the letter or by the word. And I haven't finalized how these things are going to work, but there are going to be lots of sort of textual clues around telling you stuff. So that, that's the sort of the three ways that you're going to, the three primary ways you're going to discover about the world. They're, they're the major little story things where you'll, you'll enter into something that's part of the world, but it'll it'll block your movement while you're doing it, and you're you're locked into that, and you'll learn some stuff, you'll have some choices to make. The things that's one, the second one is is objects that you can look close at, and we'll have some some information on them. And then the third is in-world text, which labels things and gives you some context and things. Um, so that's that's how it's all going. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's kind of the idea. Uh, I'm at the moment. I'm still programming systems and things, and I'm also at the same time, going through and building the the world little by little, putting everything together. Um, oh, th this is an example of a quandary I have. So uh, this is the wardrobe, and uh, you can open it, and there's a mirror in it. And uh, seeing the mirror reveals that I am invisible. The player is invisible. And I'm a little bit unsure what to do about this. I want there to be mirrors in the game, and I like the effect. It's, it has a bevel on it, which you can kind of see, which is nice. Um, but what to do about an invisible player character? And a lot of games will just not make mirrors a thing in order to solve this. Or they'll represent the player with some sort of like silhouette or something. But mostly, I think the most common thing is just have no mirrors. But I want mirrors. I've done a couple of tests. I've tested it with a, with a with a player avatar that's sort of roughly in the shape of a human, um, a human silhouette, um, but with no no animation, no limb movement or anything. And that looked silly. It looked silly. And I tried with a more three-dimensional model, but still no animation and more abstract, more vaguely human, human in form. And that also looked silly. So I am not going to make a human character model and animate it because it would just be an enormous amount of work and it will be boring and frustrating to do. So I don't know what the solution is there. Maybe the solution is just to get rid of mirrors like loads of games do. Uh, but I quite like the mirror. So we'll see, we'll see. And uh, I guess this room represents a lot of my uh, the frontiers of my advance in this game now because there's another problem in here which this drawer uh, oh which did the drawer just open the door I don't know what happened which has a thing in I'm not going to pick it up because this is currently broken that you can't pick up objects that are inside other objects um, because I think I've just I've combined those two systems all of the interaction with objects is contained within the same script, um, and I need to break that apart and treat drawers differently from objects you pick up. Um, so you can't get anything out of drawers yet, but you will be able to. Um, and there's not much else to show in here. There's uh, the start of a kitchen with uh, 
and some stuff and stuff, but it's very basic. And then most of the space that you have to explore is this flat. It's two bedrooms, a living room, a kitchen, a bathroom, and a toilet. Um, and that's where almost everything is going to happen. Uh, so quite a small confined space. There is a down. There is going to be a downstairs flat as well, which you can go into, um, but it'll be much less developed than the rest. Uh, it's really only one room that's, that's going to be there. And then on the ground floor, that's going to be out front, but I haven't stuck anything there, so you'll just fall into the void at the moment. And then, oh, fall into the void, much like that. Let's try again, shall we? Um, and I haven't 100% figured out doors yet. I mean, I have figured out doors, but the script that I write just is a little bit slow and... How do I do that? There is there is a literal hole on the hole. Uh, yeah, no, I have figured out doors, but the script is a little bit unresponsive. It doesn't feel good to go through them at the moment because you click on it and it waits a bit. And uh, I'll just go back. I need to go back and write that. But then this is sort of the extent of the game that you'll be able to come out uh, into the back garden, and there'll be some more stuff happening here. Um, that is a chest of drawers, which is currently hovering outside the house. Um, and I, I know, knew this is a problem. I've messed up the distance between the ground and these steps. So currently, the only way to get past is to sort of jam yourself in the corner. Again, like I said, caveats. Um, so all of these doorways won't be openable, um, and there'll be a story reason for that. Um, but yeah, so that, that that's kind of the limits of the game. Uh, that'll be the limits of the game. It's uh, uh, a flat with a few rooms, and then one room downstairs, the garden. And something out of the front of the house, which I haven't 100% really cleared up exactly what it's going to be. That's the last sort of story point that I'm still mulling over in my head uh, what's going to happen there. Um, but yeah, that's, that's it. That's the, the next game, what I'm working on at the moment. I've been really happy with my own progress so far. It's been going very well. A little bit slower than I had hoped, I guess, but that's mostly because um, when I initially started, it was going to be very simple models, very basic. And then I find I want a few more polygons, a few more details in them than that. And so, um, I guess I haven't quite like pinned down exactly where the level of detail is. So, for example, I think this chair, apart from some problems with the shading there, is is nice as a model. It's a very simple model, but it works. This radiator is actually too complex of a bit of a jump of, of a bit of geometry. It's got like a whole bunch of holes going through it, but because of the shading style. You can barely see them, and it just kind of ends up a mess. So, um, yeah, there are a few things like that. Whereas the pencils are are about right, I think, in terms of detail. The hippo is fine, but because it's flat, um, Maybe it needs some more. Maybe hippo is the wrong animal. Maybe it should be a panda or something with more more color choices going on. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of it. There's there's a lot more to make because there's a lot of furniture and little objects to go in. Um, oh, and there is a there is a problem with playing with these objects, which I knew about when I made it, which is that if you're too close and you play with them, they just kind of clip through any geometry that's nearby, because uh, I'm not doing anything particularly clever here. When you click on it, it 
teleports the object to just in front of your your face and it disables the mouse look and starts rotating the object with the mouse instead. Um, I do have a solution for this and um, I just haven't got got there yet. I'll come back to it. Um, I think that's that's kind of all I've got to say. This is a sort of a marking point of early in a project that uh, I think is going to be cool and um, and is going well at the moment. And uh, we'll see how things progress. Thank you very much for watching and toodaloo.